Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to talk a little bit about GNOME boxes for virtualization. Now, I've talked several times about VirtualBox on Linux in the past, particularly for testing out Linux distributions. And today we're going to do a brief look at GNOME boxes, which is an alternative. I can say after using GNOME boxes a few times, it actually is quite a bit easier. So if the prospect of VirtualBox intimidates you a little bit, definitely have a look at GNOME GNOME boxes instead. It is easier to use, but of course, as my basic opinion would go, anytime it's not that much easier to use, you lose a lot of control. There are still a lot more things you can do in VirtualBox, and there's a lot more compelling reasons to use it. However, GNOME boxes is a much more easy and user-friendly option to use for your virtualization. Now, does this mean I'm going to switch entirely to GNOME boxes? Uh, I don't know, probably not, to be honest. The reason I tested it out to begin with is there seems to be a bug in Linux Mint VirtualBox with other either Linux Mints or other Ubuntu-based desktops. I haven't figured it all out yet, but on system updates, it tends to freeze and just get stuck. I did test it with a non-Ubuntu distro today. It works just fine, leading me to believe it's something with Ubuntu or a combination or, or a Linux Mint in a virtualization. Nevertheless, this did force me to play around with GNOME boxes, uh, hence the video here today. Now, first, it is very simple. Their user's guide is over here at um, help.gnome.org and then um, slash user slash gnome dash boxes slash stable. And uh, this is about our GNOME boxes. The application to access virtualization running locally or remotely allows you to connect to display um, uh, of remote system. So you can access things on SSH or uh, I haven't tested it yet, but you in theory should be able to access a remote computer um, utilizing SSH, whether or not you can get into a, um, uh, an actual desktop environment on that. That's something I would like to test out soon, and hmm, maybe I will, actually. I have the capabilities to, may as well give it a test. But uh, this is just a preliminary overview, so we'll do that a little bit later if we need to. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're just going to have a brief look. Now, having a look over here, it's just getting started. Of course, anytime you're doing virtualization, you may need to enable virtualization in your BIOS. So get into the BIOS of your computer and find the enable virtualization mode. And that is probably something you may need to do. And then in here, you can see there's just, uh, just a few basic questions um, just because... Uh, they need to have these, so how do you use your USBs, how do you delete things, stuff like that. And so it's a very simple system. So if we were to head on over into our desktop here, I'll show you what this guy looks like. So it is very simple following the basic GNOME approach. You simply see a list of all of the available machines. You click them, and that's about all you have. Now, we do have local, which is uh, anything I'm doing on the local machines. In this case, this is where we ran our latest Linux Mint video. And you have remote, which is anything utilizing accessing a different server. And this is actually my onboard web server here, uh, which just a test to see how you can get in there. Now, if we head back on over and pull down our hamburger menu, there's about and things like that. And if I wanted to edit any properties, I'm going to right click and then I can open it in a new window, add to favorites. I can clone it. I can delete it or I can access properties. Now, if you are familiar with or have seen some videos on VirtualBox, you'll know that the settings in VirtualBox can be overwhelming very large amount. Now, over here, we can adjust the name. Here is your basic system. So this will give us a monitor reading. So if you want to, want to see what it's doing, uh, you can see all those when the machine is on. Here is our memory. So you can very easily adjust the memory back and forth. I'm giving it uh, six gigabytes uh, of memory and then the maximum disk space so you can just slide this guy around now anytime you slide this you're going to need to um, uh, refresh your snapshots you can also give it the cpu count 
So this will tell you how many CPUs it's using. And when I first used this in default, it would collect all of my CPUs. So be careful of that if you're going to be doing like video stuff or other intensive things while these are running. So I'm going to cut it back down to half my uh, available CPUs right now. We can run in a background or not. Here is uh, devices and shares. So the CD tray, I can go ahead and hit this. And if I head on over to my downloads, I could put any um, ISO image that I have inside of here. So that's good if I want to um, just rename this guy and th throw something else up over there. And then the snapshots. Um, it did automatically create a snapshot when you first create it, but that was cleared because I changed the... Um, uh, I believe the hard drive settings will clear out the snapshots. So also be aware of that. So as far as its usage, it's quite easy. Um, you just hit your plus button over here, create a virtual machine or connect to a remote computer. If you're doing create a virtual machine, you can um, click on these guys here, which will simply download the latest versions and then it's going to install them or you can select an operating system download or select an image file. So you can browse and search for an operating system to install. So here are some of the options that you have. And uh, you can just kind of maybe, uh, let's see, is Windows available? Now, of course, Windows not available. I bet Mac's not available either. Oh, well, what use is this crap? No, it's good, actually. Um, I can't do Arch. Let's see if I can do an Endeavor. Can I do anything other than this basic list? Maybe I can't. I don't know. Uh, we have Debian. Uh, we'll just kind of browse through them. OpenSUSE, Clear Linux, Android. So if you want to try some Android, that sounds fun. I might want to play with that. Uh, here's Fedora, Fedora Silverblue, Alt Servers, Alt Education, Endless OS from a variety of different countries. Here's Ubuntu's. I wonder why they're all Ubuntu 19s. Um, we have CentOS, which, by the way, CentOS just died today, so be careful of that. CentOS Stream might still be a thing, but CentOS 8 uh, this week, is it is uh, officially de dead. Uh, FreeBSD, here's Debian, so Debian 10s. NetBSD, more OpenSUSEs, more Fedoras. And then you can just kind of scroll through. There's Ubuntu 18s. Let's go ahead and just do a search for Ubuntu's. Okay, so in this download list we have, we're only going up to Ubuntu 19. Now you can just go to the uh, website and just grab the ISO. I mean, that's what most of you are going to do anyway. So you can just go ahead and grab the ISO image, hit the open, and then you're giving it your resource allocation. This is how many memory, uh, how much, how many memories? <laughs> How much memory does it have? Uh, what's your size of your disk? And you can customize it here. And then hit create. Notice it doesn't give us the things like the CPU and stuff like that. So once we hit create, it's going to just go ahead and uh, create the, uh, the box. I'm just going to go ahead and cancel it because we already have one here. So just click on the box. Now, here is the only downside. On VirtualBox, you might need to install your VirtualBox guest editions. On this one, the package that you would need to, um, need to install is Spice-VDAgent. That was the one thing that I was fighting with on this the most is clicking on it, and I was just not able to get it out of um, 1080p, or was it uh, 1060, 10, 1044, whatever the, the, the default resolution is. Um, I was not able to get it out of that resolution and into my 1080p. So after a little bit of research, then using this application um, on the machine was able to get it working. So as it's loading up here, we have our panel bar at the top. We can hit hit our uh, maximum size screen there. It's going to display what our screen resolution is, which is 1920 by 1080. And then here we're landing on our uh, desktop. We're just going to go back to the default cinnamon. And you'll notice that it's giving us a resolution. It looks like this, what is this, uh, 1044 by, I don't know, I forget. Uh, whatever this resolution is. Let's go ahead and just enter our password there. And once we enter our password, it should go back and set our um, default back to our 1080p, which we have set previously. Okay, so here we are. And you can see the gray bar at the top. That's going to disappear with our settings. If you want it back, just hold your mouse up on the top of the screen. You can go ahead and resize the window there or go back to full screen. 
We have the option for um, uh, just different keyboard options there. And here is your settings. You can send a file to the machine. This is handy. Um, easier to do, way easier to do than it is on VirtualBox. We can take a screenshot. Uh, we can add to favorites. We can force it to shut down. We can restart it. Or while it's live, we can do some adjustments. Now, some of these adjustments you have to reboot the system to take, but some of the adjustments will take immediately. And so there we have it. Now it's back. And now we can go ahead and proceed to use our system. Uh, we can shut it down. We can force a shutdown. Or in my case here, I'm just going to go ahead and shut it down utilizing um, the regular menus. And then it's just going to close everything down and land us back inside of our GNOME Boxes system. Now, if you want to do something remote, um, you can come up here, connect to a remote computer. You can see we can do SPICE, RDP, SSH, VNC new one. In this case, I'm going to do SSH and we're going to do the user at the IP address or if you have a domain name. So you're going to do that. It's going to connect it up, ask us for a password. And now we're into our server. So this here, I would probably just use the terminal emulator if this is the extent of what I'm doing uh, but you can actually connect to other remote computers and we will test out some desktop applications as well uh, so we're gonna just close that out back up this lands us back over here and let's go ahead and talk about uh, sorting and organizing we can search for things if we have a lot of VMs we can change to a basic list and if you want to delete one just go ahead and come over here and just select your your option so there we are now we have went ahead and deleted it now as far as my experience using gnome boxes uh, I went to it in frustration over an issue with a virtual box it did get me through my problems and it worked just as fast as virtual machine used to on my older uh, OS build so with that Overall, I'm liking um, GNOME boxes as an option, as, as something to use for virtualization, and it's excellent to have multiple options. As I said, since I have a good virtual box uh, profile and system setup, I will use that when I can. But GNOME boxes, if you are looking to play around um, with other Linux distributions and whatnot, GNOME boxes is a very good, very logical option to take because it is so simple. To me, my only distaste for it is it's in many ways just too simple. And uh, with being too simple, I get lost in where to do some of the basics. And also, it is not nearly as uh, supported, community supported as VirtualBox. If I'm having problems and issues with VirtualBox, there is a huge support of people that will probably be able to answer your question. Trying to find resolutions on GNOME boxes is a lot more difficult. So consider that. Consider the support that you find um, out there as well when you're considering which one of these systems you might want to use. So with that, there is my take on GNOME boxes. Let me know if you use GNOME boxes. Are you to take an interest in it? And uh, let me know your thoughts and your experience in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.